Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. And today we're reviewing the Buff Bunny That 70s Collection. This is the new collection launching on Saturday, July 2nd at 1 p.m. CST as usual. And as the name implies, this is a 70s kind of retro hippie type theme with a lot of fun little strappy tops, some fun prints and colors, and some other more unique items. There are definitely some pieces I'm super excited about in this collection, but I feel like overall this one wasn't totally my favorite for some reasons that we will discuss as we get into the items. Anyways, as always, if this review helps you out, you can use code Catherine when shopping the launch. It's just a support code, not a discount code. It just helps your girl out to keep making these reviews. And as always, if you're using my codes, make sure to get your entries in my monthly giveaway. It's always on my website. So without further ado, let's get into the review. So we're going to start off with the colors of the launch. Sometimes I skip this section of the video, but I feel like it's important to have because we always post the color comparisons, which let me tell you, when I saw a new blue in this launch, I was like, all right, I'm gonna have to get all like 20 Buff Bunny blues that I have out for this. Anyways, we are starting it off with Peace Pink, which I love this color, such a fun little neon pink. Studio 54, this is a true bright orange. Salsa Red, which they've brought back multiple times, a true bright red. There's Olivia Olive, which is this just like brownish natural green. And there's also Groovy Green, which is really just like a slightly lighter shade of Olivia Olive. And since it's already up here, this is Yoda Green, which is a bright neon. Tuxedo Blue, which is a little pastel, a little powder blue. Jean Genie, which I'm always sucker for a nice true blue like this. I've been saying true of like every color, I apologize. There's also Brady Brown, Journey Dark Brown. Ivory, which is a lighter white. The color I am wearing right now, this is Stardust, which is like slightly deeper than ivory. There's also Bubblegum Pink, Farrah Yellow. The Usuals, Midnight Navy, Onyx Black. And then for the prints, there are the petal prints. So I have the green petal print here. And as you can see, all of the petal prints have a bunch of other colors in there. Like we have tuxedo blue in there, there's Yoda green, there's ivory, there's stardust. So I could definitely mix and match these bottoms with this top as well as with a bunch of other options. I don't think I would like a full petal print outfit, but I love the option of mixing it with a solid color for the top or having a petal print bra in solid bottoms. And next I'll insert the squat tests. I will do double squat tests of any slightly questionable colors, but most of them I feel are pretty solid today. So if I don't feel the need to do a double squat test, we'll just do a single. Okay, I can't find my normal squat test underwear. Okay, the banana underwear. So today we will be using this pair. Last Buff Bunny review you guys liked when I organized based on leggings, then shorts, etc., etc. Also, we did a horrible job self tanning this hand today. So, we will start out with the leggings, and we have to start out with the Foxy Flare leggings. So, these are Buff Bunny's first ever flare leggings. I know some of you guys will want to call them yoga pants, but to be honest, I used to be the same way, but calling them a flare legging, it just makes a little more sense because you can wear any pants for yoga, but they have a flare at the bottom, so they are flare leggings. Anyways, these are made of the Nubri fabric, and I will put the fabrics at the end of each item, but just in general, the Nubri fabric is a double brushed, ultra soft material that I just feel like hugs every curve really well, but it does collect some pet fur. So for me, this color is great because my cats are lighter. So if I have any pet fur on them, this will hide it. An up close of the Nubri fabric, just super, super soft. And I feel like the Nubri is like especially soft in this collection. You guys will have to let me know when you get your pieces. So my biggest disappointment about these flare leggings is they only come in one length. And listen, I can wear basically any length of legging because if it ends a little higher up on my leg as a tall gal, 5'9", if you guys didn't know, I still feel like it looks fine. Like you can have an ankle length legging. What I won't have is an ankle length flare legging because those just look like floods, high waters, just too short. And I've been seeing some people who are like 31 inch inseam, that's so long. 
actually a 31 inch inseam. I have reviewed many a flare legging, had an entire video on flare leggings. The standard regular inseam for a flare legging is 31 inches. I know it seems a lot longer than like a 26 to 28 inch legging, but when you have a legging, you want it to end at or slightly above your ankle. But with a flare legging, if it ends in the same spot, it looks too short. So you want the flare legging to be a little bit longer to come down and cover a little bit of your ankle so you don't get that like floods look. Anyways, my shorties and my tallies, I feel your pain either way because even though my shorties, I have less sympathy for you because you can hem things, you don't get the same flare effect when you do hem a flare legging depending on how much you need to hem it. Also, like I know hemming is a pain, but for my tall gals, there's nothing we can do. You can't make any pants longer. One time someone told me, oh, you can like let out the seam a little bit. Like, wow, thank you for like the centimeter of extra length, like doesn't do anything. So anyways, that is a big bummer for me because I know at a 31 inch inseam, these are going to be a little too short for my personal liking. I like to have a 33 inch inseam. That's just what works best for me. We will also see if these are large calf friendly because I have had some flare leggings that kind of cling to the calves and I don't like that look. Wow, we've been talking about these for a long time. Okay, anyways, seamless waistband, no front seam. They do have the legacy tri seam detail on the back. So they're a little, they're a little more elevated than a regular flare legging. Let's try them on. But maybe I could make these work for me, but it's not just the length, they're clinging to the calves. I just feel like this looks this looks kind of stupid because it's like so clung to my calves and then it flares out. So, okay, comment down below. Do these look wearable or do they look silly? Because I feel like it just looks a little bit silly. So definitely for more um, average calf size ladies. Mine, if you guys didn't already know, are literally giant. So anyways, besides that, we got a nice high rise. I mean, the top of these leggings feels just like legacy leggings. So if you like the way legacy leggings feel, then you're gonna like how these feel. Um, super, super soft. I'm loving how the Newbury is feeling this collection. This is definitely going to be a questionable color squat proofness wise. Um, I feel like it's okay so far, but definitely not, not gonna be the most opaque choice here. They're feeling true to size. Um, if you're in between, you could probably go either way, but if anything, I'm feeling like these are a little bit snug. So maybe size up if in between. Probably not very cellulite friendly in this lighter color. And yeah, so the length, I was actually able to like pull them down a little bit to be maybe like a decent length for me, but definitely best for like 5'4 to 5'7. I feel like this is going to be the prime length for you and about a medium compression on top. And I love that they decided to add the legacy detailing in the back, just to add a little something to the leggings. And I just really hope that they do end up coming out with longer inseams, maybe less of like a fit and flare and maybe flare a little higher for the large calf ladies. But other than that, I think I might still be able to wear them. They might be okay for me. I feel like this fit and this color is super cute. Then we have a classic, a basic, the Rosa legging. So these are a 26 inch inseam and these are the most basic of the leggings. So they have no top band or anything. I'll probably stop mentioning this at some point because none of the leggings have front seams, but anyways, no front seam. They do slightly dip down in the front to be a little bit of a V. Then they have just like a subtle V taper in the back to enhance the glutes a little bit. These also have a slightly extended crotch gusset and are also made of the Newbury fabric. I reviewed these so many times, but anyways, they are a medium compression, medium to high on the booty scale. Um, I would say most of the colors are pretty cellulite friendly, especially prints, but in general, I feel like the Newbury fabric does help a little bit in covering cellulite just because it is double brushed. And I find Rosa leggings true to size, but if you're in between, I think you can absolutely size down. Sometimes they have like a tiny bit of extra space. There's also the Rosa pocket leggings, AKA basically the same thing as the Rosa leggings, except with a pocket. I didn't get any new colors of these but I've had just about a million Rosa pocket leggings in the past. These are the same inseam length, 26 inches, the same Newbury material, ultra soft, medium compression, medium to high on the booty scale. Rosa pocket leggings, I sometimes find to run just a teeny bit smaller than the Rosa leggings. So still true to size, but if you're in between on the Rosa pockets, 
I may choose a size up. And in general, with the prints in this collection, prints always run a little bit smaller and are just a little more compressive than the solids. So if you're in between sizes on a printed bottom, I would definitely choose the size up. And the Rosa Pocket leggings have two very spacious phone pockets on the side. I love that about them. Next, a new legging. These are the Flower Power leggings. So these are slightly shorter at a 25 inch inseam and they're made of a jacquard knit material. So we've seen jacquard fabrics from buff bunny many a time the original like jacquard i don't even they just called it jacquard a while ago but that little line type texture and then also in the mad scientist collection and now we have the flower version so this is the up close and jacquard just means that the print is literally woven into the fabric so it's not a print that is like you know printed onto the fabric it's literally woven in and let me tell you whenever i pick up these leggings they are heavy like there's a lot of material to these leggings so for me uh looking outside where it's 100 degrees i i literally don't even want to put these on right now because it's just too much for me honestly most leggings i don't even want to put on right now but especially these with how heavy they feel they're just definitely not a summer legging they did say that this jacquard is stretchier than the mad scientist launch which Thankfully, because honestly, the Mad Scientist jacquard, like I couldn't even get mine on. And they do feel quite stretchy so far. So these have seamless waistband, no front seam. They do have two side pockets. These are kind of reminding me of the shape of the original Luna leggings. I didn't love the shape of the original Luna leggings. They have this like little curved seam on the back, or I should say like a rounded seam. It doesn't like contour the glutes like most other seams they have on their leggings. Like I would have loved this in the Rosa pocket shape because I find that shape to be very flattering on me. But yeah, it has this curved shape, which just tends to sit on the glutes and I don't love. And apparently they were worried about the squat proofness of this material. So they added an extra panel around the glutes to make it more squat proof. So I feel like that's part of the reason why these seem so thick, but you can see there's this extra panel here to help with squat proofness. To be honest, the material doesn't look, eh, okay, I do, that is a little bit sheer. Okay, I think I, it's making sense why they put that panel in. So they're thinking about squat proofness. We will try that. We will double squat test these ones for sure because it's a light color. Um, oh, and last detail, they have the sewn on metal buff bunny logo here. Okay, here are the flower power leggings. So I was a little worried about these ones being too snug just because they definitely had a smaller waistband measurement than some of the other leggings today. But I think because they're so stretchy, that they are still fitting. So I would still say true to size. If you're in between, I would probably size up though, just because I am getting a little bit of compression in the back. So these are 25 inch inseam, so they are a little shorter on me. And compression overall is a medium to high. These are pretty thick, pretty snug, and definitely compressive, um, but they still have a lot of stretch to them. So I don't feel restricted in the knee area at all or in the crotch with squats. So definitely still very functional. No front seam and no gathering. So I do think this is a good size for me. We have nice spacious pockets on the side here. You'll see the Rosa pocket shorts later did not fit my phone completely. These ones, have a lot more space for the phone. So a phone will definitely fit. And then onto the back. So because they added that extra panel in, it's making the glutes kind of pancake a bit. There's no chance of any like, you know, hugging of the glutes, any separation. So these are gonna get, ugh, I don't even know if they, maybe a medium on the booty scale. I'll evaluate for sure when I'm doing my editing, but no more than a medium on the booty scale, unfortunately. Um, that extra panel they added in for squat proof is also just like, just flattening things out a bit, which is not my favorite. It also makes it feel like a little funny in the back. It's like a little too snug around the glutes where everything else feels really stretchy. I don't love these seams because they sit too low on the glutes for me. I like everything to be above the hip bones, uh, but you will get a lot of cellulite coverage in this print. So yeah, I don't think this is a top choice for me. Um, I do really like how stretchy they are, but I think it's mostly this little glute panel that just makes them not my fave. The Loch Ness leggings are coming back. I have reviewed these in the past. These are the same version as the Mad Scientist collection. So these are also a 26 inch inseam, true to size, but definitely size down if in between. I honestly could probably do an extra small myself, but I still think 
the small is the safer bet for me. These are a 75% nylon, 25% lycra. So it's a performance material on the outside, a little bit sleek, but the inside is brushed. Okay, this is not a color that's launching. They're launching in a lot more like neutral colors this time, but this is how they are. They have this little little hourglass seam detail in the front, curved glute seams in the back. And the big thing about these is the contrast piping detail, but I did want to just show a close-up of the fabric. So here is the outside of the leggings, sleek performance, but the inside is very soft against your skin, slightly brushed. I will say in terms of a sleek material, these are not like the most durable. It does tend to catch on things and can pilt pretty easily. So I feel like this is not my favorite material in terms of like a high intensity workout, even though it is sleek performance. Light compression, medium to high booty scale. And these are also a little bit on the thin side, so not super cellulite friendly. Next, another new pair of leggings are the inline seamless leggings. So they launched a seamless legging in the most wanted collection. It was just a very basic seamless legging. This one has a couple more things. I don't like, I'm not loving the seamless. To me, like, I don't really like the more like thick, marl seamlesses. To be honest, I'm very picky about my seamless leggings and the only ones that I really like are my Alphalete Amplifies. So, you know, there's no surprise that these aren't my favorite from Buff Bunny, but they're a nylon polyester spandex seamless. They also have this little like fishnet type detail on the side and a little like ankle sock detail. These are really screaming like bombshell seamless leggings. If you guys know, they have had a legging very similar to this a while back. And those, those were never really my personal cup of tea anyway. You also have a two tier compression on the waistband, a knit seamless logo. And these do have a little seam slash scrunch on the back to add a little glute separation. I do like the addition of that. And while these aren't like the itchiest of the seamless leggings, they're definitely not like the softest either. Um, sometimes with this marl kind of material, seamless leggings can get a little bit itchy. These ones are also a slightly shorter inseam at 24 inches. For seamless leggings, I feel like they tend to have a lot of vertical stretch, so they tend to not look quite as short as they may seam based on the inseam. And they're also not as high of a rise. They're an eight and a half inch rise. The rest of the leggings were like a 10 inch rise. First, let's just show that Peach is indeed here, chilling. Peach, you haven't made an appearance in a while. They missed you. Yeah. Okay, so this seamless material is feeling better than the seamless material from the Most Wanted launch. Um, it's a little bit thinner, a little bit stretchier, definitely snatch in the waist. I also have just ate lunch, so I feel like it's snatching me a little harder than it should. But I also noticed that the seamless leggings are coming in the full size range this time. Last time they only went up to an XL. This time it is double X or small to three XL. So the full range. So glad to see they're expanding on that. It is a seamless legging. So there's no front seam, a little bit of a single camel, but not too excessive of gathering. You have this detailing down the side. You will see um, your underwear through. So you'd have to pull that up a little bit or not wear any. I was too lazy to do anything about it. And the scrunch on this one is like, way more exaggerated than the scrunch on the last seamless leggings. Like the last ones, I didn't really feel like it went up the glutes very much. This, like I didn't even have to adjust it this much. It's just like, it's hugging right into the glutes. So um, definitely a high on the booty scale. These are super flattering. Um, I will say it definitely is giving you that wedgy feeling. So it's very tight at the bottom of a squat. Um, it feels a little stiffer than the Amplify scrunch from Alphalete. So, just keep that in mind. You're definitely gonna get that wedgy feeling. But personally, I like how it looks, so I don't really care if I have a wedgy feeling, but definitely high on the booty scale. I wish that these didn't have like the sock detailing and all this because what they're doing here for the glutes is surprisingly great. And the rise, even though it didn't have as high of a rise um, measured, it's still actually quite a high rise. So still gonna say high rise. Overall compression is about a medium uh, and maybe not as much cellulite coverage as I originally thought. There might be some, but probably not as much as the last seamless. And it's it's overall a decently soft seamless, but I feel like this little lattice detailing makes it slightly itchy. So you do get a little bit of an itchy seamless. And the last pair of leggings are the Rebel leggings. These have been back a million times. Honestly, one of my favorite 
performance leggings from them. I really like these. They're coming in two little like checkered colors. They're coming in the black checkered and the red, which matches the salsa red. So the Rebel leggings are made of the Elysium fabric. This is a 73% polyester, 27% spandex, truly performance material. Unlike the Loch Ness leggings, I feel like these are really high intensity. They don't snag on things. 26 inch inseam as well. And I have actually worn an extra small in some Rebel leggings in the past. So definitely size down if you're in between or size down if you like a little bit more compression, but you can definitely stick true to size. And these are super flattering on the glutes, high on the booty scale. The way that they have the glute contour on these just like perfectly contours the glutes. That's another one of my favorite things about these. Now on to the shorts. Guys, guys, just like honestly, honestly shedding a tear right now on how upset I am. Guys, it's June and Buff Bunny continues to only launch four inch inseam shorts. We need, we need the five to seven inch range, preferably a six inch, but the five to seven inch range would be perfect. And I just feel like they keep getting rid of that length of short and I don't get it. Cause I did a poll in my story a while ago and I was just out of curiosity asking your guys' like favorite lengths and like features of leggings and stuff. And by far the six inch inseam one, yet but funny is launching like three different four inch inseam shorts. And then, and then they're like, oh, don't worry guys, we included a biker short, 10 inches. 10 inches is too long. I, they, it's giving, it's giving Bermuda shorts. I just, I have worn the Rosa pocket bike shorts before and I just really felt like the 10 inch inseam, even as a tall gal, just was too long for me. I know some people might like these. There's nothing wrong with these shorts. I feel like we're really neglecting a prime length of short. And I just don't understand. I just don't understand. And I would love to love a four inch inseam short do I wear them anyway? Yes, but I'm constantly picking them out of my crotch at the gym and it's just not a cute look. Anyways, we will be done ranting, but I really would love some five to seven inch inseam shorts. Anyway, the legacy shorts, these are up first. I have the green petal print here and I will say I have tried on these as well as the Rosa shorts in a solid color and these fit a lot larger than these. So again, the prints, they run smaller. So if you're in between on the prints, definitely size up. These are a four inch inseam, as mentioned. <laughs> um, and the rise on the legacy shorts is actually a nine inch and the Rosa shorts is actually a 10 inch. So you're not gonna get quite as high of a rise on the legacy shorts. Better for my shorter torso ladies. Newbury fabric as usual, seamless, no front seam, and the legacy shorts have the little tri seam detail as usual. Another thing about the petal prints is that anytime you see a light color, on a print on the outside they are going to be lined with the lightest color on the inside so these do have a white lining um, i didn't really feel like i noticed it that much when stretching out the fabric but when these were rolling on me at the gym this morning i did see the white poke through and i just i didn't i didn't love the look all right legacy shorts so i did wear these to the gym today and the print definitely feels a little on the compressive side so these ones feel like medium to high compression. And I feel like I might get a tiny bit of cutting in just with the printed ones. This isn't going to happen with the solids. Um, and at the gym, these did roll up on me. Um, see if we can replicate that, but I'm sure I have some gym clips. But when they roll, you can see a little bit of the white lining. So that did bother me a bit. Still a high rise, goes right to my belly button, no front seam, little crotch gusset, and fairly flattering on the glutes as well. We've seen the legacy shorts a bunch of times. And next, the Rosa short. I think I'm actually liking these better than the legacy shorts. Um, same inseam, four inches, and these are just the Rosa leggings in short form. More basic, a little higher rise. And the waistband is also a little taller as well, but the solid colors in this are super, super stretchy. So definitely true to size. If you're in between, usually I say size up for shorts, but honestly you could go either way with these. And they added a little internal waistband pocket to these. So these now have one of those little internal key waistbands. I never do anything with these pockets, but it's there. All right, here are the Rosa shorts. So they do come up an inch higher than the Legacy shorts. So for my shorter torso ladies, just be aware of that. And the solid Nubri in this feels so much lighter compression and just stretchier than the printed Nubri. So keep that in mind. Um, I would definitely say true to size, or honestly, you could even size down if in between on the solid shorts. 
so I don't feel like I'm getting any thigh squishing. These feel very thick thigh friendly. Um, they still will roll because of the length for me, but we have a little lower tummy control. It kind of dips down a little bit, no front seam, and we're still gonna go with medium to high on the booty scale. So yeah, just a very basic pair of shorts and then that little hidden pocket is up in here in the waistband. Um, I like that you can't really see it when it's laid flat here. And these ones I would actually give like a light compression overall, just because of how stretchy it feels. They're also bringing back the wave shorts. Listen guys, the wave shorts, they used to be five inches. What did they do? What did they do? They, they, they changed them to four inches. Why would we do that? I loved the five inches. Anyway, I haven't tried the new wave shorts, but they resemble the Loch Ness leggings just in short form. I think I actually like the short form better. The same nylon Lycra blend, kind of sleek on the outside, but not super performance. Light to medium compression, medium to high in the booty scale, and they have that contrast stitch detailing. And next, as we've already alluded to, the Rosa Pocket Bike Shorts. I'm glad that they at least have a longer length for people. I guess I should say that I'm more of like a middle, a middle length short lover. Anyways, these are the Rosa Pocket Leggings in short form, no front seam. These are also a 10 inch rise, so a little higher rise than the Legacy shorts. Two side pockets, very spacious, and little glute contour seams in the back. I don't know, I mean, I could try to like roll them up a little bit and have them be a little shorter, so that's an option. I guess they're not getting, they're not getting too tight down there, maybe a little bit snug, but it's still, still a little too long for my taste. Regardless of the shorts length, okay, ignore the extra fabric, this is from pulling them up, but we have no front seam, nice high rise, the 10 inch rise, spacious side pockets. Actually, it's like a little bit smaller than the pocket legging. No. Okay, so these pockets are not fitting my phone quite entirely, but the Rosa pocket leggings usually do, so I feel like they have a slightly narrower pocket on the pocket shorts. So just be aware of that. And still flattering on the glutes. The Newbury fabric is super soft. Probably cellulite friendly in most colors. And last pair of shorts are the Disco shorts. So they're launching a bunch of things in this velvet material. I didn't get any of the velvet. To be honest, I'm not like a huge velvet person, so I wasn't too bummed. But the Disco shorts are a two inch inseam. So they're super short little lounge shorts. They are a velour polyester spandex. And unlike the crushed velvet of the Frozen collection, this is more of a smooth velour. They have a satin piping detail and a satin stretch drawstring. I'm not, I'm not loving the use of all of these stretch drawstrings because you have to tie them like so tight in order to get any like, you know, snugness on the waist. I wish they would use more of like a stiff drawstring. That's just me, you know, comment your opinions down below as always. And I did not get the disco shorts, but they said that the sizing should be similar to the flow shorts. So whatever waist size fit best for you in the flow shorts, get in the disco shorts, except they're not as flowy as the flow shorts. Okay, now onto sports bras and tops. Probably what I'm most excited for in this collection, to be honest. First is the Flower Power sports bra. So it's essentially like the Geo sports bra, except in that flower jacquard knit. There are a couple differences. I did lay this on top of the Geo sports bra and it seemed to have slightly less coverage, which you know, it already had a lot of coverage, so I don't think I'll mind that. Removable cut pads as usual, um, a long line, no true elastic. There's a three hook closure in the back. So you've got a three hook bra closure. It comes with an extender as well. This is the extender for the Geo bra, but it comes with the same one. And a cute little detail they added is instead of just like a ring, like the Geo sports bra, they actually have like a little flower ring. So. Flower Power Sports Bra, got a little flower ring. Okay, so the Flower Power Sports Bra actually fits me much better than the Geo Sports Bra. So I feel like whatever they did to the coverage really worked. So still have that long line. We got some cut pads in here, but I just don't have all of that like wrinkling and excess fabric that I had in the Geo Bra. So I would still say true to size, but if you're in between, I would still size down because you always have the option of adding the extra bra extender clasp. So I probably could still do an extra small on this one. Full coverage, no side boob, and just no chances of escape and support. It doesn't feel quite as supportive as the Geo Sports bra. So if that one was more of like a high support, I guess, I don't know, maybe medium to high, medium to high. And the back, we have the strappy details. I don't think the flower is too noticeable. 
um, unless you're really looking closely, which could honestly be a good thing because if you think it's a little bit like cheesy, you're not gonna notice unless you're really looking closely, but I still like all the strappy details in the back. The material is interesting. It's definitely a little bit thick, but it's not itchy or anything, which was something that I was worried about. It's actually pretty soft. Then the Transcend sports bra. Again, this is an old color, so take it with a grain of salt. This is to go with the wave shorts and the Loch Ness leggings. So it's a long line sports bra with some contrast piping detail, a good amount of support and coverage on this one. Full coverage, medium to high support, true to size as well. Same nylon lycra material that the leggings and shorts came in. And the back of this one is really fun. So first of all, it has some supportive straps that are really gonna like hold you in, not fall down or anything. But they also have these little decorative, like almost monarch bra style straps in the back. So it's a super strappy, pretty good coverage sports bra as well. It's almost more like a crop top. The Rosa sports bra V2 is back. So this is to go with the Rebel leggings made of the Elysium fabric. Full coverage and actually pretty high support. And I would say true to size, but if you're in between, I would choose the size up. The Elysium fabric can be a little bit compressive. And I always love my Rosa bras. So Rosa V2 bra is no different. I love this one as well. And it's also a long line bra and potentially a little side boob as possible. To go with those seamless leggings, we have the inline seamless sports bra. So made of the same seamless material, it has that little fishnet detail in the front, cup pads, and kind of a little crisscrossy strap detail over the front. And then the back also has some little color panel detailing in the back. Okay, here is the seamless bra. So we have that little mesh detail in the front. So you will see a little bit of cleavage through, but overall coverage wise, I'm gonna go with a medium to full coverage, pretty good on the sides and not too scooped at the front. I definitely feel secure. The bottom um, ribbed section provides a little extra compression to hold you in. And there are just a couple little contrasting color um, details, especially on the back. You can see there's a couple of different colors. Um, support, I could go with a medium support. Um, the straps, I could see this irritating me over time because the piping detailing is a little more stiff than the rest of the fabric. So I could definitely see that irritating my skin over time. And there are cut pads. Last time there were no seams to separate the cut pads, but this time the little mesh separates the cut pads. So I don't think you're gonna have any, any wandering cut pads throughout the bra. And then the back is pretty basic. Overall, I think I like this bra better than the past seamless bra. I think the shape is better. It's supporting me and covering me pretty well. The Geo Sports Bra, this is another one that's been brought back a couple of times. It's the Nubri fabric, and this one has a ton of coverage. So this is definitely one of my like large cup size favorites if you're looking for coverage and support. We'll give this one a try on because sometimes I find this one to fit me a little bit strange. So I did get my normal size small today. So this one's very similar to the Flower Power, but we have just like a little ring detail instead of the flower, the three clasps as well, and it does come with the extender. Here's the Geo Sports Bra. So as expected, it's doing the same thing as last time. I don't really understand what's going on with the fit that I'm always getting this, but my personal sizing recommendation and something that I should probably do next time I get the Geo Sports Bra is to size down and then take advantage of the bra extender. Or I might not even need to because I'm already on the tightest hook here, so I could probably do an extra small like on the loosest hook, but I feel like it's nice and snug along the bust and the band here, but then I have the extra fabric, so if I size down, maybe it would be a little more snug everywhere. Comment down below if your Geo Sports Bra does the same thing, just so I can get an idea, because this is always doing this on me. Totally full coverage and medium to high support, long line, and I love the strappy back detail. Having the clasps isn't always the most comfortable for like if you're doing like any bench press or anything where you're lying down on a bench. So, you know, plan your gym days accordingly. Like they did a good job of making it really flat so it doesn't stick out a lot and I haven't noticed any discomfort at the gym with this top in particular. Next, we have a super fun sports bra. This is the High Roller Reversible Sports Bra. So you kind of get two sports bras in one. First of all, I like this one because it's very different than most Buff Bunny Nubri bras. So this is still made of the Nubri fabric, but I would say like 
99% of Buff Bunny Newbury bras are long line. So they have like the extended fabric below the bust. And this one is one of the very few that's actually an elastic at the bottom and not long line. And don't get me wrong, I can like a long line sports bra, but sometimes I find a shorter sports bra a little more flattering on me. So I was actually really excited to see a non long line. And I just love the little piping detail. So this is, I believe, groovy green, and then you got the Yoda green piping, and you can also flip it. And in this case, it is just fully Yoda green. So it's a spaghetti strap with a little Y style back that kind of shifts a little bit. You still have the Buff Bunny logo on both sides and the tag here they put on little strings so you can kind of easily cut it off but my one thing about the sports bra is because it's reversible they did not put any cut pads in and I, I love a good cut pad I know controversial opinion but I just feel like it gives you a little shape and it hides the nippage and I did wear this to the gym and for some reason when I am you know deep into a workout we get some nippage I, I don't know why that happens but it does so definitely had some headlights going on at the gym today. It's not the biggest deal in the world. I just wish that there would have been some cut pads in here, but I have to say, I think that this is going to be an item that sells out quickly this launch. I just feel like this is a piece that a lot of people are liking. Okay, here's the high roller sports bra. And I just, I love how it just ends right under the bust. I feel like my core is most defined, like, you know, up at the top. So when a long line sports bra covers that, I don't know, I feel like it's just a little more flattering for me when the sports bras are shorter. So I hope they continue to do some shorter sports bras because they don't do enough. So this is a double thickness of Newbury. So it's far from sheer or thin, but you definitely can still get some nippage because there is no space for the cup pads. I really wish they just like hid a little, little space for the cup pads just so we could have them because I love my cup pads. But even though this is a spaghetti strap sports bra and I feel like a lot of people were worried about like how this would work for larger cup sizes, it's far from a high support sports bra but I am fully covered. I would say full coverage, but I felt like at the gym, it felt like more like a medium to full coverage for me, but they definitely took note of the amount of coverage here. Really not any side boob, we're fully covered on the top and I'm not gonna fall out of it. I did wear it for a workout today and I didn't have to adjust myself once. So I would say it's still large cup size friendly, but not supportive. So it's definitely a light support. It's not something I'm going to do high impact activity with, but for me, I mostly lift weights in the gym and I'm really not jumping around that much. So I don't always have to go for the maximum support. I love the little contrast pipe detailing. If you wear it on the other side, it's just gonna look like a solid sports bra. So I prefer to wear it this way. Very open back and just like a little T-strap detailing. This feels very retro classic. The elastic at the bottom, I honestly don't know if it's really a true elastic or or what but it's, it's really not cutting into me very much at all and this was also comfortable on my traps during my workout so nothing was too tight on this one and sizing definitely feels true to size go with your normal sports bra size if you're in between you can really do either way this doesn't have any extra fabric nor does it feel tight on me and then the other sports bra that i think will sell out slash I love it, is the Foxy sports bra. So this goes with the Foxy leggings as well as really like any piece, but I'm wearing it right now in the Stardust color and this is the Jean Genie color. We have this high neck detail, just makes the shoulders pop. I feel like it's a very unique neckline to find in a sports bra and we're not doing the try-on portion yet, so I shouldn't talk about everything. I'm getting carried away, but I actually really like this one. So it does have removable cut pads. It's Newbury, it's long line. And you'd think it would just be pretty basic in the back because you have this like cute little thing going on in the front, but it's actually very strappy in the back. So they have the ring detailed, kind of bring all the straps together. And the straps on the sides are actually adjustable. So I just think this one is super cute. And another one that I think is going to sell out because Funny really doesn't have a lot like this. So this looks a little risky for my larger cup sizes. For me, it's actually working. Definitely have a little bit of side boob going on, but I feel like I could work out in this and not have any spillage because this part up here is keeping me pretty secure. Little long line, no harsh elastics. We do have the cut pads slightly visible in this lighter color, but I don't think it's too bad. This part, the straps are firmly attached but there is a little sliding detail along the back so you can kind of slide this up 
or back, and then this strap is adjustable as well. I love the little strappy detail in the back. I think it's super cute front and back of the sports bra, which sometimes you have to prioritize one or the other. And I wore this the entire seated portion of the video and it never cut into my neck or anything. So it's still a very comfortable bra. And I feel like it's good for, you know, arm days, upper bodies, because you have a lot of movement in your arms. And support, I'm actually gonna go with a light to medium support. I'm getting most of the support just from the compression along the bust here and coverage overall, we're going to go with medium. There's a little bit of side boob, but everything else is pretty covered. Next is the Donna crop kind of halfway between a top and a sports bra. So this is a textured nylon spandex material. So here's the material, it's textured, it's super stretchy, and you have this kind of like twist halter detail that you can tie in multiple ways. It is like a true tie in the back with little like metal aglets. It's pretty cropped as well. And because it would be hard to fit a bra under this style of top, they did include a shelf lining with removable cups. So you could wear it to the gym. I don't really see myself wearing this to the gym. I see it more as a lifestyle top, but still super cute. We have the Donna crop. Um, they were talking about how it was a very short crop. I don't feel like this is a very short crop. We're covering most of my torso with this and a high-waisted legging and I have a long torso. So I feel like for most people, this will be a good crop length. So I did crisscross the straps in front of me here. I feel like this is the way it's kind of meant to be. Um, it was a little challenging. I did have to untie it and then really tighten the straps back here, but I was able to do it myself without any help. So this one is definitely less coverage than the Foxy Sports Bra. I'm gonna go with a medium coverage. We have a little, you know, peak in the middle here and I just, I don't feel quite as secure in this one. So this one, just based on how this feels on me, I don't think I would wear it to the gym because I could sense, I could sense a spill happening. It wasn't really meant to be a gym top, but you know, and this is definitely light support. I might change the Foxy Sports Bra to a light to medium because it definitely felt more supportive than this. And we do have the inner sports bra lining with cup pads, but the cup pads on this one feel a little more flimsy than some of the other sports bra cup pads. So I feel like they were kind of creasing a little bit and I had to work to straighten them out. So I don't feel like they're the same cup pads. It's got the little texture detail, very stretchy. Um, I'd say true to size or even size down if in between, you just get a little more compression. Cute top overall, it's just not really a functional gym piece. But yeah, I definitely like the vibe. There's also the Jive Jersey tank. That is a full length tank, very scooped along the sides and really more of like a layering piece so you can show off your sports bra underneath as well. It's made of the spice mesh. So if you've had the spice jackets in the past, that's the same material as well as the same material as this dress coming up. So a little stretchy mesh and it's a relaxed fit. So probably stick true to size. The naughty crops are back except a little bit changed. So first of all, we got this like little baseball style tee and it's now made of the Nimbus fabric and I love the Nimbus fabric. It's just, it's so, so soft. I want all of my t-shirts to be made of the Nimbus fabric. This has a little twist tie detail in the front, a little bit cropped, but you won't really show too much skin. Okay, here's the naughty crop. Um, my idea of wearing this over top of the Foxy sports bra, not the best idea because you get those little straps there. So don't wear this sports bra underneath. Anyways, this is the Jean Genie color. Love the Nimbus fabric. It's so soft and I really like the cropped length of this. Comes up a little bit in the center. So you show a little bit of skin here, then it comes down in the back and kind of reaches the top of my legging waistband. So for most people, you will not show any skin um, except for in the front here. Um, snug fit in my true size. Um, if you're in between, I probably would choose the size up because I don't think it's supposed to be like skin tight. But yeah, very soft. Here's an up close of the little twist detail. And I believe there's a little, yeah, there's a little metal logo on the bottom left side. And I've always had a special place in my heart for these little like baseball tees. I don't know why. I've always just like really liked them. So I really like this style. And 
then the disco crop to go with the disco shorts. So it's made of that velour material. And this one also has a built-in shelf lining. It just says built-in shelf lining. I'm not sure if there are cup pads or not. I don't have this one. And it's also a halter style neckline. Okay, now onto the other category, okay? Other little pieces that I didn't feel like fit into the pieces we've talked about so far. So there's the hottie halter bodysuit, which is like an ultra plunging bodysuit. This is not a gym piece. This is definitely a lifestyle piece, but it's actually made of the Nimbus fabric, which I think was a great choice. I love how soft the Nimbus fabric is. It's got a lot of stretch to it and it has a deep plunge and it's a halter around your neck. So it's backless. I'm not really sure if there are any clasps or anything on the bottom to like make for easy bathroom times, but um, it doesn't say that there are any clasps, so I'm guessing no. And then the disco romper, that is another piece in the velour material, except instead of the shorts and top separate, it's just a one piece romper. So I believe this one is also a two inch inseam, so it's also going to be quite short. And the waistband still does have the stretch drawstring. And next, a piece that I am quite excited about is the dazed mesh dress. So there's the dazed dress and the dazed mesh dress. I wanted the day's dress because mesh is definitely not my number one fabric choice, but I didn't love the colors that the day's dress came in and you know I love this color. So we went with the day's mesh. So it is a dress with full on shorts inside. So an active dress. I have tried many an active dress at this point. So I know what I'm looking for in these. So first of all, four inch inseam in the bottom. The left pocket has just like a regular phone pocket. The right side is that like little tennis ball pocket that they had in their skirts last year. It's made of the stretchy mesh again. And the top of it is kind of rosa bra shaped, got the scoop neckline, does have removable cups as well. And, and the back has the intertwined twisted straps. But my main but my main disappointment about the dress is that it says it has a built-in bra and it just has built-in cup pads. This is not a built-in bra. A bra must have an elastic if you ask me. So I was bummed to not see any sort of elastic in here. I'm glad we at least have the cup pads and maybe I'll have enough compression to feel comfortable in it. But for my larger bust ladies, this might not be the best choice because there's no elastic on the bottom to really like lift and support the girls. Okay, here is the dress. And you know what? The mesh is growing on me just because it's so hot outside. This mesh is just a very lightweight, super stretchy mesh too. Like some mesh is not so great. So first the inside shorts. So made of like a sleek performance material in here. It does have a front seam, which probably will cause me some problems just because my, of my height. You don't see it because the dress is down. Um, it might be a little uncomfortable, but to be honest, it's not like too tight of a seam. Got the four inch shorts. So they might roll a little bit on me. They're a little bit compressive around the back here, but not too bad. I would probably stick with your short size for this. Um, if you have a larger bust size, I think you're okay sizing down just because there's no elastic in here. So you kind of want that extra compression. And then we got the side pockets on the left. This should be able to fit Yep, fits a whole phone very securely. And then the right is a little tennis ball pocket. So a little variety here. And I also feel like it's a good length. Um, some of these active dresses I felt like have been very short on me. This one, it still is hitting, you know, below the glutes and everything, but I don't feel like I would bend over and immediately flash people. Just a second for the top of the dress. Um, definitely fits me snugly up here. It's not too tight. And I like the straps in the back. It just reminds me of the Rosa bra. I feel like this is a very athletic shaped dress but I definitely feel like I'm not as lifted as I could be. I'm not gonna get any nippage. Could I go on a walk in this? Sure, but I can tell that there's no elastic under there because I don't feel like I'm being lifted up. So if I could change one thing about this dress, I would add in an elastic. It would just, it would just change the game for the larger cup sizes because I don't wanna have to wear a bra under this dress. So I'm gonna go with a light support but coverage wise is medium to full coverage, I feel like in the top. So I'm absolutely still gonna wear this and I do like it. I just wish I had that little extra secureness. I'm the type of person with bras where I wanna feel, I wanna feel compressed and squished. Like I don't like a loose fitting bra. I want it to be snug. And then we kind of already talked about the dazed regular dress, but 
figured I would just put some information based on what I know about that one. Okay, the Permafrost Pullover V2. So this is the same as the original Permafrost Pullover from the Frozen Collection, except the material is slightly different. So they chose this material, which is the same as the Donna Crop, super stretchy, textured. It's a quarter zip, has thumb holes, and is a slightly cropped length. Okay, the Permafrost Pullover. So I never got to try the original one, so I'm glad I'm trying it this time. I kind of wish I got a more neutral color just because how often am I going to wear like a bright red, uh, you know, little crop situation. But it's actually really cute. I love how stretchy it is. It's surprisingly soft on the inside. It's just really more of like a sleeker lining. You have the texture on the outside, super stretchy material, nice thumb holes, and you can wear it, you know, unzipped a little bit or you can zip it up and it does have this little mock neck collar. So definitely a snug fit. I would, I would stick true to size because it's stretchy, but if you're in between, I might consider a size up just because it is a little bit snug. But yeah, I think this is a nice layering piece. It's got a little bit of a throwback vibe with the texture and it is slightly shiny, but I still think it's a cute little top. And the last clothing piece is the club jacket. So, so this is like a classic varsity jacket. So it's pretty heavy. Again, not gonna be something I'm reaching for this summer. And to be honest, I don't know if I'll reach for this much ever, except for, in, you know, a photo or something. Or if I dress up as like something 70s for, I don't know, a costume event. It is very costumey, which is why I don't know if it's like the most practical purchase. Um, definitely something if you're just like a Buff Bunny Collection fan and you wanted to have the Buff Bunny Collection varsity jacket, then, you know, it makes sense. But for but for the average clothing wearer, I'm not sure this is going to be a huge hit. So it's made of a satin, pretty thick as well, ribbed cuff detailing, Buff Bunny collection embroidered on the back, and they have snap closures up the front and the inside is a quilted satin. All right, let's throw this bad boy on. Okay, so this is a small and it's definitely got that like oversized fit, so I wouldn't size up. Um, if you're in between, you could probably even size down, just depending on how snug you want this. So let's do some buttons. Okay, and even on my bust, it's not pulling on the buttons. So yeah, definitely runs a little bit big. Ooh, it's, it's quite warm. <laughs> it's definitely a thick jacket. So um, you can see like the sleeves are actually like pretty thick. It's not just like a one layer situation. Definitely thicker than some of their previous bomber jackets. It kind of goes right below my hip bones, so it's not gonna cover your butt, but I wouldn't consider this a cropped jacket. Sleeves are plenty long on me, if not even a little bit of extra length for that kind of like oversized baggy fit. And then you have the jacket. It's definitely a cute vibe. I like what they were going for with this. I just like really don't know when I would wear it. And the inside is quilted and all of the buttons are this kind of like matte look and it just kind of snaps into place. And there are some pockets as well. Um, the pockets don't have a zipper or a snap or anything. They're just kind of standalone pockets. They also have more Newbury scrunchies to match all of the leggings and everything in the collection. Three pack crew socks as well that they include these are the green ones. They have the little Buff Bunny logo. Some of them say like peace and love. I'm not a big crew sock wearer. I don't think they flatter my legs because my calves are like giant, so. And the last accessory is the Game Changer belt bag. And I watched the behind the designs and they were talking about how like, oh, this new piece, the Game Changer belt bag. I was like, guys, I've had the Game Changer belt bag for like a year now. It is not new. They're bringing it back. Mine is in the I believe they only launched it in like the marble collection. So I do have it in the marble print. I literally just got up to go look for mine and it's it's hidden in my closet somewhere, but I've actually gotten quite a bit of use out of it. I've worn it for a lot of my hikes and stuff and it actually is pretty spacious. Like I can fit my phone, my wallet, some hand sanitizer, some chapstick, a little hand lotion. Like 
lots of stuff fits. It's like a slightly elevated belt bag. It's not like your normal like fanny pack. So I feel like it can go with a variety of outfits. The outside is the same material as the Buff Bunny backpacks. So slightly water resistant and it has the metal zippers as well as like a metal buckle as well. All right guys, that is it for the review. Go ahead and leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and if the video helped you at all and you wanna support me when you're shopping the launch, feel free to use code Catherine. And now for top picks of the launch. Let's do a little top picks. I think potentially the dazed mesh dress or just the dazed dress if you like the colors of that one, just cause I love a good active dress. Definitely the foxy sports bra and the high roller sports bra. And I feel like that's, that's kind of it for my top three. Um, maybe the foxy flare leggings if those are a good length for you which, you know, you have to be kind of within the 5'4 to like 5'7 range for that to really be prime. And then either like Legacy or Rosa shorts, although I know that those are also a four inch inseam. So it's not my top pick because that inseam isn't the best for me. As always, I love to hear your thoughts about everything down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.